Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the New Teeth Now webinar. My name is Bianca, and I'm here tonight with Dr. Richards, and we are so excited to talk to you all about New Teeth Now, a full mouth dental implant procedure, and what that looks like. Um, <coughs> if you are joining us through GoToWebinar, welcome. There should be a chat box on the lower right-hand corner of your screen, um, so we would love for you to submit any questions that you have for Dr. Richards to answer tonight. If you don't see that chat box, there could be a little orange arrow that you'll click on to pull that up. And if you're joining us through YouTube, welcome. You can submit questions right through our comment section and we'll be answering as many questions um, as we can get to tonight. We're so excited to kind of jump into things. How are you doing tonight, Dr. Richards? Doing well, thank you. Good. I heard you had a really interesting case today. I did, I did. Um... <clears throat> As we'll talk in, in the uh, webinar about zygomatic implants, we did a quad, a quad zygoma on a young fella and some lower implants as well to give him a set of fixed teeth in the upper and lower. So that was, that was about an 8.30 to 1.30 procedure today. So, a little more yeah, complicated yeah, in the case. Yeah, but he got his teeth at the end of the day and everything yeah. looked really good. It's awesome. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll get into what zygomatic is, if most of you probably don't know that definition, and we'll talk a lot about that um, in just a few here. Um, so let's get to know Dr. Richards a little bit. He is a board-certified oral and maxillofacial surgeon since 1982, with over 40 years of dental implant experience, and he is an innovator of new teeth now. Um, so can you explain a little bit about, you know, why this procedure is so important for patients to have this option? I sure can, but before I do that, I just want to thank my production team who's here. I haven't done that in the past because without them, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be able to see this and you guys would not be able to get all this valuable information. So thank you to all you yes, guys. Yes, thank you, the best. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, Dr. Kirkpatrick and I are both board certified oral surgeons and uh, Basically, what you're seeing tonight is all he and I do. It's all we do. And, you know, it kind of boils down to the basic question of, if you're going to go have your heart surgery, do you go to a general practitioner? And, of course, the answer is no. And if you're going to have your full mouth dental implant surgery for teeth the same day, are you going to go to a general practitioner? And, of course, the answer is no. And... To me, it seems so obvious, but every week, in the last couple of weeks, every week we see someone and it's like that program you see on TV, the facial plastic people called botched or something like that. I mean, it's like a trickle of botched people who come through our office. Uh, so, you know, this is not an easy procedure. These procedures take us three or four hours with people under general anesthesia. And before you jump into something like this, you really, 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 really need to make sure that you're dealing with someone who's trained and competent. And so I think, you know, we can start with that yeah. and kind of move on from there. Yeah, so, you know, a surgeon that specializes it, that has a ton of experience, that's who you're wanting to look yeah, for when you absolutely. search for a facility. <clears throat> um, and to kind of get into what we are looking at when we talk about a hybrid, um, we'll have, we have a couple slides that showcase that. Um, so what, are, what is our patients looking at here? Well, the, the tooth and the pink colored part are the prosthesis. Now, these are not individual teeth. This is a solid bridge it goes around the entire arch and it is a prosthetic device that looks like teeth it's not individual teeth if you have individual teeth and we remove them this device will feel different it's not going to feel like individual teeth and it'll be a little bulkier but it is screw retained you cannot take it out in the upper the palate is completely wide open and there are little screw holes through the teeth and those little screw holes are filled in with uh, tooth or gum colored material so that if someone happened to be that close to you looking up into your palate, they would not see any screw holes. I'm always amused by that uh, because hardly anyone's gonna be in there looking at that particular area. <clears throat> but anyway, it's called a hybrid. You know, there's hybrid cars. They run partially on 
this and partially on that. And the hybrid prosthetic is a device that the implants don't have to be right where the teeth are. So many of these people come in with shrunken up jaws. They have lost a lot of bone. They've been wearing dentures for 20, 30, 50 years. They've been around. They've been to all the places. They've been told they don't have enough bone for implants. And so we're going to see them and we're going to do some implants for them. And so we have to put the implants in where the bone is. But that's not necessarily where the teeth need to go. The teeth need to sit in the person's face so that you know, they show their teeth and their lip is supported and the bite is correct and all that sort of thing. And so the teeth are set up correctly for the way the teeth should be, but the implants are not necessarily where the teeth are. So it's kind of a hybrid type of a right, thing. Right. Yeah. And that we do this for the upper and there's another picture of, of the lower there that we're looking at. <clears throat> that particular picture has four implants. What, what, go backwards to the upper. How many implants does that, you can't really yeah, see, six. but it's, yeah. you know, the typical upper implant is supported by six implants, not four. Mm -hmm. And then the typical lower here is four. We typically do five or six. And sometimes if there's room in the back to put a couple of more short implants to make it seven. So, you know, we try to use all of the available bone. But the, the lower is just like the upper. The teeth need to go where the teeth need to go and the bone is where the bone is. We can't really change that easily. So we just have to make that work. Um, and to kind of go into what surgery day looks like, so the patient is put into a deep sleep and general anesthesia for a pain-free procedure. Um, if the patient has teeth, they, they are first extracted, and then Dr. Richards will place all of the implants. And while the patient is still asleep, we'll take impressions for the lab upstairs to customize the teeth. Um, the patient will wake up in a private recovery room while our lab is fabricating the teeth. And then at the end of the um, day, around 4, 4.30, the teeth are placed in the patient's mouth and adjusted, and they can go home. And it's literally about that easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it definitely is a very streamlined and efficient process that we've and it, gotten it's, here. It's the all-in-one day, all-in-one office. And if you look at the, the circles, one of the circles is the surgeon and one of the circles is the general practitioner, and one of the circles is the dental lab, and we have all of that here in this office. So all in one day, all in one office. And we have a process that we have been doing for a long time, and it is repeatable. Uh, there's no bait and switch, you know. I haven't, I can't even remember a time that I have placed the implants and done all this and not given the person a full set of fixed teeth to go home with. So, uh, you know, we pretty much got this down and like I said earlier, this is all that Dr. Kirkpatrick and I do every day. And that is so important. Um, and to take a look at our physical location, um, you'll see it's a pretty big <clears throat> facility. We have the upstairs lab in the back um, on the second floor. We have two ORs, um, a ton of patient rooms, really just a, a large space where we can take care of all of our patients. Um, and, and that's part of why our process is so streamlined because we have the capacity and the people to, to, to do that. Um, and so we are going to also hear from our patients. Um, so this is Shirley. She's from the UK and she had years of pain. Um, she couldn't eat certain foods that she loved and she was very self-conscious about her smile and how her teeth looked. So we're gonna hear from her and see how New Teeth Now has, has changed her life. You can't eat apples, you can't eat steak. There's all sorts of things you can't eat. I also couldn't eat sweet things, but I was always at the dentist having something put back or I was just in severe pain. I saw an out. Here, here was 
something that I could do which was going to take away all the years of hurt, pain and people looking at you like you don't take care of yourself maybe. I know that's in your mind but it's a big part of how you feel when your teeth don't look good. For new teeth now to give me a, a solution has just been life-changing. I didn't want anyone else to do the procedure but Dr Richards because I really, really trusted him. So we put her to sleep, removed all of her teeth, trimmed up the bone and infected tissue, installed six implants in the upper jaw, six implants in the lower jaw, and that afternoon we put the teeth in and she and her husband uh, went home. I really liked how Dr. Richards spoke. I liked how he behaved with people. My husband and myself got on with him really well straight away. It was the connection I needed. I, I needed to have spoken to somebody one-to-one -one personally. Dr. Richards solved the problem. I wish I'd known about New Teeth now several years prior. The fact that you can go there and come away with teeth in one day, to me, is just mind-blowing. Now I, I can just eat what I like. You know that really hard toffee that you can get with the chocolate on the I just love that. <laughs> and so many people compliment me and say how beautiful my teeth are, that it just made a huge difference to my life. I think I'll be a lot more confident again. So not only does Shirley just look absolutely beautiful, she can now eat anything she wants. She was talking about those uh, toffees that she just missed eating, now she can eat them. <laughs> so um, it just, it not only improves like your appearance, but it really improves, the, the main thing is improving the function of your teeth and your health as well. Um, and like many, she wished that she had done it earlier. So um, can you tell uh, what what we're looking at here with the sure. traditional implants on the x-ray? Sure. The, these are what we call a panoramic x-ray where you're getting a, a view of the entire upper and lower jaw all in one shot. And the uh, upper is sort of a, a traditional technique that we do every day where you can see that far left and far right implant are sort of tilted to the front and that is to avoid the sinus. So that tilted implant technique is something that we use every day uh, to avoid the sinus. I'll, I'll talk to you for in a few minutes about zygomatic implants and how, how that impacts the sinus. And in the lower, you can also see that the far implant on the left and right, it's also tilted and that's tilted around the little hole in the jaw where the nerve comes out, which is called the mental foramen. So a foramen is a hole in a bone where nerves and blood vessels travel through the bone. So there's a little foramen down there, and the nerve runs through the jaw. There's one on each side. It runs through the jaw up to the corner of the mouth where that foramen is, and then it comes out of the jaw and it fans out into the lip and chin. And so injury to that nerve would cause numbness in the lip and chin. So to avoid uh, any injury to that nerve, we tilt the implants in front of the nerve. But the tilting, it moves the working part of the implant more to the rear in both jaws, where the body of the implant goes more to the front, so we don't have to be stuck with putting in a little bitty short implants. We can put big old long ones in. So the tilted uh, technique is something that we employ every day, just about. Yeah. On on everybody, yeah. Um, yeah. And talking about zygomas, we'll watch an animation. So what, what are they seeing here with the zygomatics? Well, the zygomatic implant is it's just a regular old implant, except it's longer. Whereas the traditional implants go up to about 18 millimeters in length, the zygomatic implants go up to about 55 millimeters in length. And they, they anchor to the jawbone and the cheekbone. So. They're very stable. Uh, they're the most stable implant that we place, and they're used in the upper jaw only. Some people come in and think that zygomatic implants can be placed into the lower jaw, but they're upper jaw only, 
because the zygoma bone is the cheekbone. It's the bone that's at the lateral inferior eye socket area. So each week, Dr. Kirkpatrick and I might do 10 zygomatic implants each. We do that many of them. And uh, the reason is people come to us and they don't have enough bone for implants. That's what they've been told. They've been around. People nowadays are very educated. They've done a lot of research on the internet. They'll go to three or four places. Some, some people will go more. And so they come in here and they're skeptical and they've been told but uh, unfortunately they've been told by people who are not knowledgeable. So uh, we've probably done 3,000 zygomatic implants over the last 11 or 12 years and they are uh, the workhorse. They are absolutely the workhorse when there's no bone in the upper jaw. There's very little impact on the sinus from the zygomatic implant as long as the sinus is healthy. And if the sinus isn't healthy, we typically send people to an ear, nose, and throat doctor to get the sinus healthy. Uh, we can talk more about zygomatic implants in, in person. If you need something like that, we're the place to come. Uh, we do more than anybody in the country right here in Lakeland. And they work well. Like I said earlier in the webinar, uh, placed four today on one person. I think last week I did two or three people with four, and so did Dr. Wow. Kirkpatrick. And so zygomatics are a workhorse. Now you can see in this picture, the uh, quad zygomatic picture, where there's two traditional implants in the front. So occasionally we'll find someone that's got a little bone up in the front, and we'll reposition the zygomatic implants a little bit more posterior in order to open up some of that for traditional implants up in the front, because that is a good enhancement to the four zygomatic implants. I can't say enough good about zygomatic implants. Uh, let's see, we've got another slide here that shows on the left just enough bone for four zygomatic implants. And in the middle picture, there, there's four zygomatic implants, implants plus one traditional, and then four zygomatics plus two traditional. So these are all techniques that we employ, and it's all basically dependent on the amount of bone that somebody has. Right. So. Yeah, so they are, you know, very unique, and if you do have bone loss, yeah. please call us. Like, we are the place, especially if you've, not been, if you've been told you can't have implants. Um, and we hear that almost every yeah. day, at least probably every other day. Somebody it's comes so in common. who's been told that. Yeah, it's very common. And, um, and because we advertise that, literally, quite frankly, <laughs> out on the internet uh, nationwide, um, we, we see people coming from all over the country mm -hmm. for zyg just because we do zygomatic implants. And uh, because of that, we've actually done these procedures on people from every state but North Dakota. No, we got some in North oh, Dakota we, in we've June. Done some? Yes, oh, okay. in June, so, so recent. Yeah. And that's including Alaska and Hawaii. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's really kind of crazy. I would have thought when I started doing zygoma implants in 2006 and I went to Canada to learn from a lady, <clears throat> a lady oral surgeon by the name of Leslie David. And she had learned from the guru, Chantel Malavez in Belgium. I would never, ever guess, never have guessed that, uh, you know, 17 years later or whatever, 16 years later, that uh, we'd be here, you know, doing more than anybody anywhere right. in this country. I mean, it's just... There's just it, such a need it, for it's it. It's mind-blowing, really, yeah. you know. Um, it's really incredible. So, this is a look at Dr. Richard's team. So, we have Angie, Allie, and Ashley, and they work, you know, with him in the OR and with post-ops that if you come to see Dr. Richards, you will meet um, his team as well and get to know them, and they're with you every step of the way. <clears throat> they are. They're great yeah. ladies. Well, if you come here, you're going to meet everybody. I mean, well, yeah, for the consultation. Yeah, you know, we've got a lot of people here. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it takes, I don't, we probably have 50 employees in this office. 
Yeah, I would say. And, you know, it takes a bunch of folks to pull this off. This is not some little rinky-dink operation. And uh, it, it's incredible. And, of course, you know, we didn't fall off the turnip truck last week. Um, this is not something that we just sort, sort of started doing, you know, last year. Uh, this is something that has uh, been ongoing for 40 years. I've been doing this for 40 years. And of course, it's been an evolution. And what we're doing today is the culmination of all of that time and experience and, you know, bringing our own lab on site and having Jack Garcia in the lab, who's, you know, the guru of lab guys and uh, just, I mean, just everything. It's, we could sit here all night and talk to you about our uh, evolution in this industry. But we won't do that <laughs> <laughs> because we have some other slides to show you. Um, so let's talk a little bit about general anesthesia and why we prefer that over like something like IV sedation. Right, right. Well, I saw a guy today and he, we had pretty much finished talking. And he said, you know, he said, my brother told me to tell you that about 15 years ago, our mother went in to have a minor surgery and they got her over in the recovery room and she died. Oh gosh. And I said, well, you really got my interest. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, tell me more about what, what the deal is. And he said, I can't really remember the name of what this condition, but it's hereditary. And um, so he, he said, I think I'll call my brother. So he called mm -hmm. his brother and it turns out that his mother had malignant hyperthermia. And that is an inherited condition that can be fatal, has a high percentage of fatality. And, uh, you know, in just reviewing his medical history and going over everything, because people always ask, I mean, how do you just take all these old people and put them to sleep in your office? And, mm -hmm. you know, don't you have problems with this, that, and the other? And, and so anyway, in going through his medical history in detail, which we do with everybody, you know, we came across this, which he did not put on his medical history form that he filled out and brought the anesthetist in and we talk about it. And then because of that medical problem, we decided to change from a general anesthetic to an IV sedation okay. because malignant hyperthermia would never happen right. with an IV sedation. So you can't plug everybody into the same socket. and. You know, things are based on medical history. We get medical clearances, cardiology clearance, pulmonary clearance, every kind of clearance you could possibly get, whatever we need to make it right. <clears throat> so general anesthesia. When you're under general anesthesia, your gag reflex and all that's gone. If you're claustrophobic, if you're phobic about pain, if you have any other phobias, all of those are gone because you're asleep. You're so asleep that, that uh, we have a breathing tube that goes down and you're on a ventilator and, and you're just under general anesthesia, just like in a hospital or an outpatient surgery center, which is what we have here. Mm -hmm. And so we can pack some gauze on the back of your tongue and so we can protect your airway. That's first and foremost. Any little parts and pieces and screws and wrenches and drivers, anything that would drop down your throat in a dental office, where your airway is not protected, your airway is 100% protected under general anesthesia. And one of the big things for me always has been when we're drilling on a person's bone, it generates heat. And if you don't put a lot of coolant on that, you can heat the bone up to the point that you could kill bone cells. And so when a person's under general anesthesia, they're not gonna gag or choke on saline, we're going to irrigate with sterile saline and the person's not going to be choking or gagging on that. And these are four hour procedures, three and a half, four hour procedures with general anesthesia, the light switch goes off and the light switch comes on and you're done. So there's no, you know, holding your mouth open, there's no gagging, there's no anything. It's, it's just over and it allows us to work uninterrupted and get the procedure done. So general anesthesia has a lot of advantages. 
and we do take every precaution that is taken at any other outpatient surgical facility with medical clearances and that sort of thing. Our anesthesia is given by certified registered nurse anesthetist, certified registered nurse anesthetist. I, as the operator doing the procedure, do not administer the anesthesia. So uh, we have never had a problem here in the office in that regard. So I hope that yes, answers that. Yes, that's a great that. explanation um, of why it's you know, the, best, the best way to operate yep. um, for both the patient and the surgeon. And here is a look at our restorative team. Um, so Dr. Nafala, Dr. Dibbs, and Dr. Sorrento, they are the ones that will work with you in creating your teeth. Um, the shape, the size, the color, the fit, all of that. That's what, that's what their specialty lies in. Um, and so we are going to watch a video um, with Dr. Dibbs explaining you know, how he operates and how he works well together with the lab. One of the things that really sets Florida Dental Implants apart from uh, other offices that are doing full mouth implant reconstruction, I have my own laboratory here on site that myself and the other restorative doctors are able to use. This is invaluable. Having the ability to work so closely with my lab gives me the ability to better help my patients with the emotional side of it as well. A large number of the patients that, that come to us for treatment have had severe dental problems for many, many, many years, sometimes dating back to childhood. Because of the emotional concerns that they have, we really have to spend the time with the patient. That You can't rush anything. We need to have ample opportunity to have questions asked and answered. Having my own laboratory here on site, this is invaluable, not only in terms of having the control over the quality of the product that we're making, but the ability to, if I've got a question with the patient about, can we make this change? Is this going to be feasible? I can go across the hall, get one of my lab technicians, and all of my lab technicians have been doing this for many, many years, bring them across the hall, and they can talk to the patient themselves. So we eliminate the need for me to try to interpret the patient's concerns and questions and needs in a phone call or in a note, they can speak directly to the patient. It was so important to me to have everything under one roof. There's no waiting. That is the advantage of having the lab on site. And they are so proud of their work that they come out to see the product. These are not regular people with regular jobs. These are master artisans that create. They truly are artists, and they're creating beautiful smiles. It's like nothing I've ever experienced, and I don't know of any other office that's like this. And so this is a look at our fabulous dental lab team, and we hope you really enjoy learning a bit more about that. But we did have um, a question come in during the video. Um, so she asked, how does the procedure work if someone does need IV sedation? Okay, so here's, here's the deal on that. IV sedation is a, it can be light IV sedation, moderate IV sedation or deep IV sedation. And so with IV sedation, the person is gonna be maintaining their own breathing. In other words, they're not so deep asleep that the airway obstructs. So the person will be maintaining their own breathing. Now there are a couple of different ways to do that. There can be drugs given at increments based upon kind of talking with the person how you doing, take a deep breath, see how they respond, and give some increments of medication, and that might last another 15 minutes, and then those wear off and you give another incre increment of medication, and so on through a two or three hour procedure. Another way to do IV sedation is with a pump. And so for instance, you could have a syringe of propofol Dipper van, 
popularized by Michael Jackson, the white milk of amnesia, so to speak. And then it can be given through a pump based upon weight. And it's given so many milligrams per minute based upon weight. And then you still can talk to the person, say, take a deep breath. If they kind of very slowly take a deep breath, and don't open their, you know, say open your eyes and they don't open their eyes, then they're pretty good. But if you say take a deep breath, they immediately suck in a huge deep breath and you know you need to give some more medication. So, but IV sedation, your reflexes are still intact. Your gag, your cough, your choking, all that you can swallow. But since your entire mouth is numb from local anesthesia, those of you who have had their entire mouth numb, top, bottom, left, and right, if some little something got dropped, you could easily swallow it or potentially breathe it in to your lungs. So there's not, you know, 100% protection of the airway. And you take that person who's tilted back, mouth is numb, and you're squirting water or saline yeah. to cool the drills, then there's the potential for gagging and choking and that sort of thing. So, but that's how IV sedation works. IV sedation is a lighter level of anesthesia where the person is breathing and they have their reflexes. Once you pass over into a deeper level of central nervous system depression to where the reflexes go, to where a person cannot protect their own airway, then you're in general anesthesia. So IV sedation, light, moderate, deep, and then general anesthesia. So I hope that answers that yeah, question. Yeah, that's good clarification. Um, and I want to kind of show off the two different types of material of the teeth. Um, because I think it's a really good example of why we use zirconia as our final teeth versus acrylic as our finals. Um, <clears throat> so you'll see here there are two sets of teeth. The top one is a set of zirconia teeth and the, the bottom set is a set of acrylic. Both of these teeth have been worn for five years. Um, and you'll see the acrylic set on, on the bottom there. They look kind of worn out. They're, they, you know, they're absorbing stains. They look kind of just not shiny and new anymore. Um, they look pretty dull, but the zirconia teeth are, they look brand new. They're shiny, they're, you know, beautiful. They don't absorb stains and they're extremely durable. Um, and so that's why we choose zirconia because we want them to hold up the rest of your life. Um, and I mean, that's the best visual representation you can get of that. And if you do come to uh, see us, for a consultation, um, you'll meet with either Shauna or Mara, and these ladies are wonderful. They are very um, educated in the process and will walk you through everything point A to, to Z, really. Um, so definitely, either one of these ladies you can't go wrong with. So Mara has a dental hygiene background, and Shauna has, a, has an extensive surgery background. She's worked for us for right at 20 years at least. And whenever Dr. K and I go into a room, when they call us to come into the consult and we sit down, almost every single person says, boy, I don't know what you pay these gals, but it's not enough <laughs> because we hardly have to say anything. I mean, they have been so thoroughly educated by our implant treatment coordinators that, uh, you know, it really is an amazing job that they do. I, I can't give them enough credit. Yes, definitely. So that's who you'll meet at the consultation. And then at the consultation, you'll, um, it's about a one to an hour and a half appointment. Um, you'll take a CT scan where from that 3D scan, we can, develop, a, well, Dr. Richards will develop and finalize a treatment plan. Um, so can you explain a little bit about like what they're looking at here with the CT? <clears throat> well, a CT is different than a regular, like a panoramic x-ray that would be taken uh, in, in an office because it, it's like a camera. You can take a picture from the front, the side, the back, the top, the bottom, 
So we can look at the jaws from different angles and we can see all of the anatomy, the thickness, primarily the thickness, where the sinuses are located, where the jaw nerves are located, whether there are any concavities or undercuts or anything which might influence where we may or may not be able to place implants. So the CT scans really have become invaluable tools. Not necessarily the 3D part of it, but the 2D. Uh, in particular, the uh, being able to look at cross-sectional slices and look at the mm, thickness. Yes. Yeah. Um, and here's how the entire process works. So we kind of talked about the day of the procedure, um, but overall, this is you know what your timeline is going to look like if you come in for the for the new teeth now procedure. So you'll first come in for a consultation, and let's say you're ready to move forward. Um, then we'll schedule pre-op and impressions where you will um, des start designing your first set of temporary teeth. Um, and then a few days after that, you'll have surgery. And then there will be several post-op appointments post-surgery to make sure you know everything's healing properly. If you need like an adjustment made, that can be done, that sort of thing. And then you will be healing in that phase for about six months. Then we will start the process of creating the final teeth, and those are the teeth made out of zirconia. And then we will place the finals, and you are all set. And what, what does um, maintenance look like after that? Toothbrush and toothpaste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Water pick, toothbrush, toothpaste. It's super and, simple. And come in for uh, checkup visits, just similar to what you would do with your general dentist and the, and the hygienist. So, you know, you don't want to have a, an investment uh, and then, you know, we can take your car and run the engine out of oil until it dies and then, right. you know, go to the mechanic. Uh, you want to maintain it and it's easy to maintain. So, uh, yeah, it's super simple. Can't yeah, be any simpler sim than it that. It is super simple. And we are going to hear from Megan. So her teeth were breaking and decaying and she was very <laughs> embarrassed from it. So. Um, this transformation has been, you know, awesome for her and we're going to hear a bit about how she's doing now. I think I have perfect movie star teeth <laughs> and I'm so happy. My name is Megan Howell and I'm a real patient at New Teeth Now. And when I hit my 40s, it started, my teeth really started to deteriorate. Um, they started breaking and um, at that point I was embarrassed. And then that just led me to not even take care of my teeth at that point or take care of myself. And it just continually got worse. Um, and then it became so embarrassing, I didn't want to go to a dentist. I had a lot of acid reflux because I couldn't chew my food properly. I just, sometimes I forgo eating or just eat junk food because it was easier, because it was softer. Sometimes my tooth would fall out too, and I would have to go find it in a sandwich. Oh, a burger? I could not eat a burger because my teeth would fall out inside inside the burger and then I would um, unfortunately I um, I would super glue my teeth back into my mouth with Gorilla Glue and uh, very degrading and um, and I could see that my family knew this and they felt bad and, and they tried to get me to, to the dentist earlier or get this taken care of but um, it finally did happen and my husband saw a commercial on about New Teeth Now and he took it upon himself to call and gave them my phone number and I got the call. I said, I'm gonna go. He goes, you're not, <laughs> you're really gonna go? <laughs> and I said, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna go to New Teeth Now. And so we, I drove to Lakeland and, um, and that's how it all started. And I went in that morning to the office and I was crying, <laughs> very I'm crying, crying, crying. And the anesthesiologist, he was like, why are you so nervous? This is gonna be the greatest thing that could happen to you right now. And I said, I know it's gonna be, it's just, it's finally happening. And um, it happened. I was taking pictures on my cell phone, my uh, selfies of myself in the car after my husband picked me up six hours later. I could smile. Oh, such a good feeling. 
showing all my family, look, I finally have a really good smile. I can smile and um, not have to be embarrassed. It, I just never had any pain or anything and I just had this great smile. It was meant to be basically with new teeth. Now, I, it was that easy for me to just go in and get my teeth done, have a perfect smile. So yeah, it's definitely, definitely life-changing for me. And just being able to eat and go out in public and smile and take family photos and not be embarrassed. It's just, it's, it's nice to be able to not even have to think about my teeth. I don't think about them anymore. And that's the greatest thing. <laughs> And we had a couple more questions come in. So what is the typical time from initial <laughs> consultation to data surgery? There are variables. <laughs> um, you know, we stay booked out a little, little ways, so you couldn't just like come in and then like book day after tomorrow. You couldn't do that because there, there's no opening. But if you came, let's say you came down from Georgia and you had been communicating with one of the implant treatment coordinators and you had your medical clearances and your cardiograms and all your lab work already here and you had been, you know, you said, I'm coming, mm -hmm. you know, and as long as the doctor says I have enough bone, then I'm, I'm doing it. So if they put you on the schedule and you came down, it, w it would be possible to do it pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not, you know, it may be out, of, I mean, I'm not saying you could do that tomorrow, but um, so that could, that could be pretty quick. Now, some people who have a mouthful of bad teeth or who have a mouthful of periodontal teeth, we have to take impressions and process all that and make some surgical dentures, and that might take three or four days. So it's typically not the type of thing you come in Monday morning to have the consult, and Tuesday morning you have the procedure. Yeah. It's several weeks usually. And we do only one of these a day because, you know, we get the time I get going, it's 8.20, 8.30, and then four hours later it's 12.30, you know, could be one o'clock, getting the person awakened and all that. And so then while all that's going on, the teeth are going to the lab, which is right here, and it takes the lab technicians about three hours to, con to make the initial prosthesis. So it's just a one, one day deal, one a day deal because of all the logistics. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, it's not like we can do three of them a day. You just can't do that. It's, it's not that kind of thing. Yeah. So it could be a few days or it could be a few weeks between consult and procedure. If you are looking to like get an ASAP, I definitely recommend just giving us a call like first thing in the morning and looking and seeing what openings are and uh, we'll try to you know make room for you as quick as we can. It just depends on how the schedule looks. Um, and oh, can I provide you with a copy of my CT scan before the initial consultation? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. As long as they burn it and it includes a viewer so we can open it and look at it. Yes, yeah, so yeah. usually that you know, you talk to your dentist and, and have it. Or the September. hospital or, where, yeah. the, where the scan is performed or the, or the other office and they can burn a copy, but it needs a viewer burned in there. Yes. All right. Um, and then we have a couple more patients just to look over. So this is Bruce. He's from Orlando. Um, he had a lot of pain and couldn't eat the foods he loved. And that was his, you know, main concern. Um, and now he can eat anything he wants. So it's really opened up you know, just, you know, not having to worry about what you're eating every day. That's, I feel like that's like a mental struggle, just having to figure that out every day, you know, so you don't have to worry about that. It's a big relief. Um, and Nathan, he felt, so he had a lot of pain as well, like constant pain and would, would never go away. And so it kind of like overtook his mental state as well. He was, that was all he was ever thinking about. And so after he got his teeth removed and replaced, he had not only so much energy and felt younger, he really felt like he got his life back. Um, so that's a huge transformation. And we'll talk a little bit about the six key differentiators, um, if you want to go into this in more detail. Um, but these things are all very, yeah. the, you know, the reason why we, you know, stand out from other facilities and what you should be questioning when you go to a facility. Well, you're exactly right, Bianca. 
Uh, we're both, uh, Dr. Kay and I are both board certified oral and maxillofacial surgeons. And what, what being board certified does, it, it shows that it, you have met some standard in the industry. Uh, general surgeons are board certified, internal medicine doctors are board certified, and that sort of thing. Most hospitals require board certification to stay on the staff. They'll let you join, but then, you know, within a couple of years or so, you have to be board certified or they won't, won't let you stay on the staff. So board certification, it, you know, it's a pretty big thing, and it, it does show that you've met a standard. Uh, we have an experienced team, so to pull this off, you're looking at uh, the implant treatment coordinator, you've got uh, the laboratory technicians, you saw our team up there, it's about seven, maybe more now. Uh, you've got, so you start adding all this stuff up, you've got my team of three along with me, you've got the anesthesia team, uh, you've got the restorative dentist and their assistants, so you know by the time it's all said and done, it's about 12 or 15 people who are directly involved in making this happen. 12 or 15 people between the people that I just mentioned. And they're all experienced because we do this every day. Mm -hmm. General anesthesia with our, uh, we have four certified registered nurse anesthetists who provide our anesthesia services. It's all done here in this office. There's no getting up and driving down to so-and-so's office down the street or over to the lab. Uh, we do more zygomatic implants than any other practice in the country. If you go somewhere, let's say you go to a general practitioner's office, you know, what do you need to ask? You know, where did you get your training to do this full mouth procedure? How many do you do? Do you do one a week? Do you do one a month? Do you do one every three months? Do you do one every six months? Do you do one a year? So it's very important to know how many of these types of procedures that are done in, in that practice because obviously if um, you're going to put this kind of effort, spend this kind of money, I mean it's serious business and you don't want things to be botched mm -hmm. and have to come here or some other place where people are experienced and have to be told that, sorry, but all those implants have to come out and we have to redo everything. Oh, uh, you know, you don't, wanna, you don't wanna yeah. hear that. I had to tell somebody that two weeks ago. So, you know, just think about what you're doing, you know, use your common sense and uh, ask the right questions and then you should be okay. Definitely. Um, so we really, we thank you for tuning in with us tonight and uh, asking those great questions and just learning so much detail about the procedure. And we really encourage you, if you're thinking about it at all, to at least come in for a consultation or at least give us a call uh, and talk to us more about it so you know if this is something that's right for you.